are you do you use something like Riverpod or Flutter Block or something of the sort or provider even when you're working with Flutter? Um, the short answer to that is no, not generally. But let's also break that down. There's not. It doesn't really make any sense to ever have. You say Riverpod. I'll say provider because I never upgraded. I don't. My experience is with provider and not Riverpod. But a lot of people bring up provider in the same sentence as blocks. These tools have nothing to do with each other. And I don't just mean technically. I mean the purpose for their existence is totally unrelated. What is provider? Provider is a dependency injection tool that operates in your widget tree. So you just had Thomas on here, right? And he was talking about his package, Get it. What is Git it? Git it is a dependency injector that operates from a static singleton. So it's something that gives you your dependencies from up in the static cloud. Well, provider does the same thing. It gives you your dependencies, but the way it gets them to you is by searching up your widget tree. Same result, different mechanic. So Git it and provider, very comparable. They solve the same problem in two different ways. Blocks has nothing to do with dependency injection. Blocks is, well, if we, <laughs> if we include everything that people call blocks, then blocks means absolutely nothing because people have abused that concept to no end. But if you go more with the Flutter block package and you look at how the developers around that project tend to use it, blocks are a constraint on the flow of information. How does information move into and out of the widget tree and how does it move through your business rules? It tells you, you will create blocks. Blocks will be classes with streams. Streams will talk to other streams and the eventual propagation of information through those streams will result in the network request that you want, the caching that you want, the file system changes that you want, and the UI updates that you want. That is similar to Redux. What does Redux say? Redux says that all information in your application shall be stored in a single universal store. That store will notify all clients of changes through events. When the user interacts with the user interface, it will dispatch actions, which then go through resolvers, which then mutate the store, which then notifies of the UI of changes, which then has another user interaction that then goes through actions, resolvers, the store. And this, it's this cycle around and around. That is a unidirectional information flow tool. It is meant to constrain absolutely everything you do to go through this one pipeline. And someone who's pro-Redux would say, the reason we do that is because by constraining all developers into that pipeline, we can install certain tools and we can make certain statements that we know are always true. Fair enough. The downside is that every single developer is constrained by that one set of tools, no matter what problem they're solving, no matter what the complexity. Same issue with blocks. So blocks, can you stick some interesting tooling in there? Can you make some useful statements about what is always true? Maybe you can. The other side is that no matter what problem I'm solving, whether I'm dealing with a user tapping on a button or whether I'm dealing with somebody editing rich text in a text editor, everything is just a sea of blocks. I would say that there's a downside to that as well. But those are, are information flow constraints, which have nothing, therefore, to do with provider and get it. Um, now, you asked, what would I call these other areas of code? Well, I guess I should have been more clear a moment ago when I was talking about architecture. I don't give them names in general, because in my opinion, the problems that you're solving for an airline app don't have anything in common most of the time with the problems that you're solving for a banking app. From the, from the app perspective, now networking, yeah, HTTP is always HTTP. Painting pixels is always painting pixels. But the business problems that you're solving for an airline industry aren't the same problems that you're solving for a banking industry. So why would we want or expect the structures in those apps to be the same? That's where I start to have a contention with something like blocks. I don't want, like blocks in a sense are reinventing programming. Because if you can do absolutely anything with blocks, well, we can already do that. It's called the programming language and we have Dart. So I'm more interested in really investigating the domain problem and solving the domain problem on its own without worrying about what other apps would call this same thing because I'm not building other apps and I'm not working in other industries. 
I'm right here solving this problem right now. 